Hello and welcome to part 3 of U.S. History Online. Today we'll be looking at Standard 7.8, which examines key Supreme Court decisions and legal battles in the fight for civil rights. In the Brown v. Board of Education decision, the U.S. Supreme Court ruled that segregation of America's public schools was unconstitutional. Until the court's decision, many states across the nation had mandatory segregation laws requiring African American and white children to attend separate schools. Resistance to the ruling was so widespread that the court had to issue a second decision in 1955, known as Brown II, ordering school districts to integrate as quickly as possible. The Little Rock, Arkansas School Board adopted a plan for gradual integration of its schools. The first institutions to integrate would be the high schools, beginning in September of 1957. Among these was Little Rock Central High School. Two vocal pro-segregation groups formed to oppose the integration plan, the Capital Citizens Council and the Mothers League of Central High School. Despite the strong opposition from these groups, nine students, with the support of the Arkansas NAACP, registered to be the first African Americans to attend Central High School. In the weeks prior to the start of the new school year, the NAACP provided the nine students with intensive counseling sessions guiding them on what to expect once classes began and how to respond to the hostile situations they were expected to face. The nine students soon became famous as the Little Rock Nine. Arkansas Governor Orville Faubus, a dedicated segregationist, decided to defy President Eisenhower and the Supreme Court. He would resist integration at all costs. On September 2, 1957, Governor Faubus announced that he would call in the Arkansas National Guard to prevent the African-American student's entry to Central High. Faubus claimed this action was for the student's own protection, and that violence and bloodshed might break out if black students were allowed to enter the school. The Little Rock Nine, however, attempted to enter Central High on the first day of school. Each day, the Nine attempted to enter the school, large crowds turned out to protest integration. The Little Rock Nine students were screamed at and threatened. An astonished America watched footage on TV of white Southerners mercilessly harassing African-American children trying to get an education. The nation waited to see how President Dwight D. Eisenhower would respond. President Eisenhower disliked conflict. He preferred to find compromise between political parties and people in general. This desire to please everyone and avoid confrontation, however, was often perceived as him ignoring important domestic problems. In this political cartoon from 1957, the artist is sharply criticizing Eisenhower. As the country fights amongst itself over various issues, including civil rights, the president is portrayed as flying over all the trouble and strife, happily ignoring it instead of dealing with it directly. President Eisenhower could not avoid the showdown at Central High. Many people in the country seemed to side with the Little Rock Nine students, and the Arkansas state government was clearly defying a federal decree. On September 25th, President Eisenhower ordered the troops of the 101st Airborne Division into Little Rock, marking the first time United States troops were dispatched to the South since Reconstruction. In addition, he federalized the Arkansas National Guard removing the soldiers from Faubus's control and instead placing them under the control of the federal government. For the next few months, the Little Rock Nine attended school under armed supervision. The following year, Little Rock officials closed the schools rather than comply with integration. By 1959, however, the schools were open again. Both black and white children were in attendance. The tide was slowly turning in favor of those advocating civil rights for African Americans. After the Little Rock Nine's year at Central High School, many schools across the nation followed in their footsteps. The move to desegregate spread across the country. By the 1970s, virtually all schools were fully integrated. The Little Rock Nine started a fight for equal education, and they achieved their goal. For this accomplishment, they were awarded a Congressional Gold Medal in 1998 by President Bill Clinton. Their legacy is long-lasting, their bravery in the face of hatred is inspiring, and their impact on the civil rights movement 
is undeniable. 